Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this short video, we are going to be exploring some of the background information on the effective length factor, which we typically call K, and we're gonna be specifically looking at steel frame members. So basically, uh, the members of steel frames, okay? Which would be, of course, beams, columns, or beam columns. So let's go ahead and get started. When a column, you know, or beam column, is part of a frame, we can account for the relative stiffness that each connected element is providing to the column's ends. Okay, now to do this, we reference AISC Appendix 7. So that's the Steel Construction Manual Appendix 7, okay? Now, you gotta be very careful. You need to read Appendix 7 carefully, okay? Read carefully so you can pay attention to the assumptions, okay? But in general, what we can do is um, we can use the provided alignment charts to compute what we sometimes call the G factors for each end of the desired member. Spell that correctly. We then enter the appropriate figure, and these figures are um, given as figure CA71 and uh, CA72. So we enter the appropriate figure, CA71 or CA72. To determine K. All right. So, um, how does it work? Well, each connected element uh, provides a stiffness component. Okay. So each each connected element provides a stiffness component k sub i equals e sub i i sub i over l sub i so basically what we're what we're looking at is let's say that we have a member here okay this is the member we're interested in and it's part of a um a frame system okay so it's it's got all these other members attached to it okay and this is our member in question all right well, what happens is we look at we look at the member ends, okay? We look at these two member ends, and then what we are investigating is how all of these other um, other members that are attached to the ends of the member that we're interested in, how are they providing um, stiffness to this member? Okay, so each of these attached. Uh, members that are attached at the two ends of the member we're really interested in 
are providing some stiffness component that um, is a function of modulus of elasticity, oops, modulus of elasticity, uh, moment of inertia, and the length of the attached members, okay? And so that's the basic idea of this. So um, what we do is we, we calculate these G factors for each member end. So we, we uh, calculate a GA, uh, according to AISC, we calculate a GA, um, so we could call this point A, and then we have a GB down here, okay? Um, so we have two G factors, one for uh, one member end and the other for the other member end. And so the way we calculate this is we say G equals the sum of EI over L for all of the columns and then divided by the sum of EI over L for all of the, the girders or the beams. Uh, AISC uses, I think, um, maybe G for girders here. Uh, so we calculate this for, for um, A and B. So we, we make a note here. We're gonna say compute a GA and a GB. So you're gonna, you're gonna um, evaluate this type of equation for point A and point B. So for example, at, at point A, you're gonna sum up the stiffnesses of, of the two columns. In this illustration, two columns are connected at A and then divided by the stiffnesses of the two beams that are connected at A. Then you're gonna do a similar thing for B. You're gonna sum up the stiffnesses of the two columns attached at B divided by the sum of the stiffnesses of the, of the two beams attached at, at B, okay? And um, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna enter into those alignment charts, uh, the figures that I already mentioned, C, uh, CA71 or CA72, and we enter into those charts and we determine what our stiffness value K is for that particular member, okay? So some things to be very careful about, okay? Um, note if your frame is braced or unbraced, okay? If you notice these figure labels, um, figure uh, CA71, the first one says side sway inhibited, so that's a braced frame, okay? And then if you flip the page in your steel manual, CA72 says side sway uninhibited, which is an unbraced frame or sometimes called a moment frame. So if side sway is uninhibited, that means the frame could sway. So you have to enter into the appropriate chart based on um, the type of frame you specifically have, okay? Other things to note, you need to note the fine print. Um, on, in my steel manual, it's page 16.1-573, uh, but um, you there are adjustments for columns with differing end conditions. So um, note, note if your member is attached to some type of foundation, okay? So um, depending on how your, your member is attached to possibly a foundation, um, that's gonna affect your G value. So I'm gonna quickly read um, quickly this little segment in the steel manual. It says for column ends supported by but not rigidly connected to a footing or foundation, G is theoretically infinity, um, but may be taken as 10, okay? If the column is rigidly attached to a footing, G may be taken as one. So be very careful if you have like a first floor column attached to some kind of foundation. So that's gonna conclude um, this very quick video on uh, the background information for calculating a uh, stiffness factor for a member of a frame. Thanks for watching.